Hi, I'm Andrew, and this is Blaster Breakdown. Today, the Dart Zone Max Tomcat. This is a fantastic blaster out of the box, firing short darts using an innovative 50 round drum. That's great performance to start with, but can we make it a bit better? Today, I'll show you a few simple mods that I've done, including safety delete, addition of a scar, barrel replacement, spring replacement, as well as some accessorizing I've done to make it my own. Before we start though, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to like if you enjoy my content. All right, let's have a look inside. Okay, so here's the Tomcat with all the attachments removed. I've pulled the screws out and as usual, replace them with these hex head or socket cap screws. So these are M2.6, 10 millimeter in length. Now, pulling apart the shell, there's a few pieces under here that slot in. There's our safety. So these pieces hold the drum in place. They might jump out, so I'll just put them aside. You can see that the mechanism is really solid, really substantial through here, and in fact runs on a rail that's screwed into the right side of the shell. So that accounts for a lot of the solidness of the blaster itself. There's not much twist back and forth compared to something like the Nexus Pro or the Max Striker. That's great to see. But uh, otherwise, you can see how the pusher and the plunger tube are connected. And the catch here is held at the back. And then, of course, the trigger releases the catch like so. So this piece here accounts for the slam fire. When the plunger is back, the trigger won't actually lift the latch because it's angled the wrong way. But when the plunger is all the way forward, if you're holding the trigger there, that will tilt this white piece and hit the release. I'm not going to mess around with any of that. The only lock removal I'm going to do is to remove the safety. And I'll do my usual thing where I just cut the ends off and glue into the holes so it looks nice and flush um, but doesn't get in the way of anything. The main thing I'm going to experiment with is the barrel. So you can see this is quite loose in here. There's no real seal into the breech piece and the spring. So this is quite a substantial size spring. Now barrel first. To get this out, we can lift this front piece. And then the barrel slides out and 13.2 millimeters in a diameter and just on 16 millimeters out of diameter. So that's not a really tight seal on the darts. And in fact, if we, there's a diamond dart slots through, worker gen three, we'll shake through, venture force pro dart. Just slides through so that's not a great air seal as it is not to mention that it's just sitting loose in the breech piece there now this piece i'm being careful with this spring loaded part is the bit that presses the dart to the inner ring so if we're down to only one layer of darts in the drum this piece will ensure that the dart is pressed to the inner ring to align with the pusher and here is our breech piece so we've got a ring uh, that seals the pusher um, and there you can see that's not very tight at all so the first thing i'll do is see how the stock barrel goes with a better seal in place i've got a piece of aluminium and this one has a 4.9 millimeter so a much tighter seal on the darts. So that's what I'll try after this. But first thing, stock barrel, stock spring with an improved seal.
Okay, so I'll put up the chronograph results here. As you can see, 173 FPS average is kind of in line with the usual stock performance. So it's possible that adjusting the seal at the breach here didn't make too much of a difference overall. Next thing I want to try is a different spring. So I should be able just to lift out this catch assembly. See that sits in a catch spring there. And this is quite a substantial spring, as you could imagine. 150 millimeters in length. We've got a just under 20 mil inner diameter and just under 24 mil outer diameter. So that'll give us a Y gauge of 1.8 to 1.9 millimeter diameter of the wire. And I've got a length of K25 here, so that's very similar. That'll fit in the rest with a little bit of encouragement. So I'll cut a length of this to the same 150 millimeters, and we'll see how this goes in place of the stock spring. And here we are. So same length. That slots in there nicely. Now I've got about or oh, 20 millimeters of pre-compression in there at the moment, so it's not sitting exactly flat, but I should be able to get this all closed up. Yep, okay, and let's get some numbers. Okay, that was interesting here, the chronograph results now with the K25 spring and the stock barrel. As you can see, there's a much wider spread of FPS from down to 141 up to 172 with an average of 157. So the K25 spring is giving significantly lower performance than the stock one. Prime is correspondingly easier, so easier to use, but that spread of FPS isn't really what I'm looking for. Right, the next thing I'm going to do, I'll leave the K25 in place and I'll try the tighter bore barrel fixed in here. Okay, the first thing I've noticed is this tighter bore aluminum barrel fits really neatly and quite firmly inside this breech piece. In fact, there's a really good seal there, so I won't even bother with Teflon tape or duct tape, but that does mean a slightly tighter fit at the front as well. In fact, yeah, that uh, just uh, ground away a bit of that plastic on the inside. Should fit nicely now. Okay, that's quite firm in the front there. It's firm there. That's definitely not moving at all. Okay, so tighter bore barrel K25. Let's get some numbers. Okay, so we've got some good numbers from that combination. So a much tighter spread, 176 to 186 was the range. So that's fewer than 10 FPS, which is good. Average 182.8 is the best we've had yet. The prime is still nice and neat, but I think the consistency of the tighter bore barrel is really starting to show. Now, the final combination I'm gonna try is popping the stock spring back in and we'll see how we go with that. So again, carefully, Pop this out. Oh, here goes my catch spring. So putting this back together, that rests in there and that sits inside these two bits. So it's there. Okay. this up we'll get some more numbers and here are the numbers we got so this combination of spring and barrel had a really good as you can see no shots under 180 uh, one outlier at the end over 190 which was great the average of 183.4 is the highest we've tried yet 
However, it's less than 10 FPS higher than the original loose barrel. So it kind of seems that the stock performance is not too far off optimal for this length of barrel. Now, I would be interested to see how a longer barrel goes, a longer, tighter bore barrel, but I'm not interested enough to actually do it myself. I don't need my Tomcat to perform at 200 or 250 FPS. I'm quite happy with it just like this. So I'm just going to pop these bits back in place. So I'll just chop my safety switch up and glue the ends in, and then we'll close this up and I'll show you some of the things I've done to accessorize this blaster. Okay, so this is all back together now. I want to talk about the front muzzle piece. Now, that slots in just a friction fit like so, and I actually like the look of how it complements the front of the blaster. Now, this bit that attaches is 19 millimeters out of diameter, which is the same as Nerf brand faux barrel, but it's also the same diameter of any of the worker scars. So the molded plastic, the adjustable stringed or the printed uh, stringed versions. So any of these will just friction fit in place and be an effective way of improving your accuracy with a bit of rifling. Now you could just stick them in the front and be done with it, but the muzzle piece comes apart. There's just four screws and inside we've got this piece that pops out. There's nothing actually fixing that in place. So what you can do is with a bit of tape around, you could fix any other scar barrel that you wanted in place there, and that would slot in just the same and complete the look. So I've tried the printed one uh, previously. I think I'm actually going to replace with a adjustable one so I can dial the twist up and down if I need to. Now I want it to extend the same distance out, so I want some tape just around here. It's nice and tight. Nice and firm. There we are. It's great. Just access the inside to change my twist. Okay, a few other things. The foregrip, vertical grip, is fine. Feels a little bit cheap. I've swapped this one out for this solid nylon piece. I quite like how the look complements the main grip and trigger area. So this one can just sit on the Picatinny as per usual. However, because it is quite a bit longer, I had to cut away some of this rear edge as it was bumping against this front piece here. Originally, I had the screw, this first part of the Picatinny with nothing in front, I actually pulled free under use. So now I make sure the screw sits inside this first secured slot. Nice and firm. So now I've got a bit of clearance here when all the way back. And I can demonstrate the seal now. Stick my finger in. You could hear that held the seal quite well. So that's good. The stock, again, the stock is cool, it's adjustable. Shorter and longer. It's got Picatinny on the back. I find it does feel a bit light and a bit cheap, and there is a bit of wobble. But because we have a standard attachment point, I can use this worker piece. Much more solid, adjustable, spot for a sling point to be attached. Still a little bit of a give, but uh, this I find a lot more solid. Than the original. The other thing is the sights. Again, they look all right. They're not adjustable at all, and it's a really large aperture. So it kind of takes a bit to work out what you're aiming at to line things up. To go with the look of the stock and the foregrip, I've got these adjustable nylon sights. Um, they're fold down, flip up. They feel a lot more solid when I put them in place. I think it complements the look nicely. So there we are, we've got adjustable flip up sights, adjustable scar is in place there, we know we've got an excellent air seal now through the barrel, a solid foregrip that feels really nice in the hand, and a much more solid stock, sling mount point, 
and this length is adjustable. I do also like to put some fabric grip tape around the handle. This plastic is textured, but it's still plastic, so with sweaty hands, that'll get a bit slippery over time. There's some adhesive here left over from when I previously used that, so I'll pop some of that on a bit later as well. I've got the same grip tape at the front. But otherwise, this is my Tomcat. The many are like it. This one's mine, and I think we're ready to take it outside and do some target practice. Okay, here I am, 50 feet from the target as usual. I've got some Max Darts loaded up. I've got my red dot sight zeroed in, so let's see how we go. probably enough. As we can see there, excellent accuracy at this range. I'm really happy with how this one's performing. Let's have a look now at some gameplay footage from a recent Brisbane area Nerf group event. When I recorded this, I was still using the original barrel and the scar was twisted to bring me down under 150 FPS cap for that event. But as you'll see, it served me very well on the day. Like. As you can see, reloading the drum while on the field is quite straightforward, either between rounds or even during lulls in play. I kept a small dump pouch of spare darts on my waist and could top this up from darts on the ground whenever I had the chance. Okay, the inner ring is very easy to load from behind but the outer ring still feels a bit weird having to bend the darts in a little bit. It's just me. Nice. Oh, Here comes Chris. Hi. <laughs> on the run! What's up, what's up, what's up? So that's the Dart Zone Max Tomcat. A lot of fun to use on the day, and I hope that you find my mod guide useful. On hip. Please leave any questions or comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.